pasteurization. Does it make a difference in flavor? Okay, people ask us this all the time. So today we're going to put this to the test. So many times my answer's kind of been, well, it probably shouldn't. We pasteurize at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which Celsius here. So it shouldn't make a difference, but we don't actually know. So let's test this. I have 24 ounces of meat. This is 13 and percent ABV, and it's just a basic meat. It's actually from our fastest meat video, if you wanted to know. So it's a really, really simple, traditional, nothing fancy meat. I have here 26 grams of honey, which is two grams short of one ounce. So you can use an ounce if you really want to put this to the test for yourself. And I need to get this into that mead and mix it up. We're not going to worry about oxidation today because these are probably going to get drank today. Okay, so there's no worries about that. It's not necessarily the best way to do things if you're keeping these more than a day, but these are going to be drank almost immediately. So there's just about as much risk of oxidization today as there would be if we poured it in a glass. If you want to know more about how to properly back sweeten and bottle a brew, we have many videos on that and I'll put a link in the description below. Anyway, this was complicated to get the exact amount of honey because I came up with, I roughly want to be like a 1.010 final gravity for this when it's when all is said and done, but that isn't really what's important here. The important thing is I'm making one batch, we're gonna split it into two bottles and my scale couldn't measure 26 grams and the bottles. So I had to do it in this other container and now I have to swish it around and get it all in here. So all that you're seeing happening right now, don't do this. Yeah, if you if you want just, your brew to last longer, don't do this. <laughs> this but is for only the sake, task. okay. So now I just want to mix this. this oh time. yeah, that might be easier. <laughs> My tiny little spatula here. This is honestly a comedy of errors, and that's because we're trying to minimize waste here, so that way we have uh, as as an equal scientifically based test as possible, but using these little tiny amounts. So it, we made it more difficult for ourselves than it really needed to be, but. And this is one of those times when maybe making more than a one gallon batch would have been helpful because we don't have a lot of this mead to work with, yeah. but we really don't need to make a ton of it either. And if one of these is gonna be unpasteurized and sweetened, I don't wanna have that laying around and we'd have to pasteurize it anyway afterwards. So it just turns into like this whole big, circle that ends up being vicious and cruel. So I just want to mix this all up so that we have one homogenous amount, okay? I could have put the same amounts into both bottles, but would they be exactly the same with this small amount? Mm, maybe, maybe not. So to keep the test as equal as possible, I'm trying to use the same amount of sugars in both. And it's also just been one of those days that basically you can't say anything right. I've started this video three times to get to this point. When we were planning this video, we just, we, we both started getting increasingly, increasingly louder to try to express our viewpoint on it. And it, it all worked out, but it, it was, it was stressful. See, we have this rule, he who yells loudest wins. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's not, it's not really true. All right, I think this is mixed. Yep, I don't see any more honey in the bottom, so. Again, don't do this. If you're worried about oxidization, avert your eyes. But like I said, these are going to be consumed today. So it's the equivalent of pouring it into a glass. I mean, don't, don't even worry about it. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. There's a little tiny bit left. Mine. All right, so you saw I closed one. That one is gonna sit on the side. This one, I'm not closing and it's going to get pasteurized. Now, the way we pasteurize is I use a sous vide. We have a pot of water that's over there that I brought up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to set this in it and make sure that the liquid doesn't go over the top because if it does, that kind of ruins the whole experiment. And it's going to sit in there until the internal temperature of the liquid in here reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'll have a Celsius here, for 20 minutes. At that point, it is pasteurized. Then we're going to cool it. I will probably close it at that point and cool it to room temperature, and we'll be back to show you if there's a difference in taste. Okay, so we pasteurized one, and we left one unpasteurized. They are now back to approximately the same room temperature. I chill it down, even took readings and the whole thing. So they're within a couple of degrees of each other. Room temperature is not a temperature, by the way. It's more like just a, an approximation. We also labeled the very bottom of our glasses. So these are the U glasses. And these are the these are the P glasses. So together they make P U. And on. So what I want to do, pour some into each glass. 
Oh, should I be doing that too, or do you want me to not? I'll do it. That way okay. they're all equal. Yeah, so I'll I just do the volume. Yeah, we're going to volumize these. I want to make sure I can get two glasses out of each. But I'm learning as we go because we've done a couple of these now and I never make the pours big enough. This is 13.5% mead, so, you know, we don't want to be like drunk when we're done with this, but because we do more than one video a day, folks. <laughs> All right. So that was the peas. Now for the use. For those of you curious, the pasteurized was pasteurized in our sous vide method at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. And the cap, whoops, the cap was off. Therefore it had open pasteurization. It doesn't really lose any alcohol when you do that method, just so you're aware, it would have to go for a long, long time to really lose anything significant at all. And of course I made a mess. And then I left it with the cap off to cool. So it may have actually lost a tiny, tiny amount of alcohol, but 13%. I don't think it's going to lose a whole lot really to make a big difference. I know some of you probably find it amusing that Brian always does this, then he makes a mess. And you're like probably thinking, oh, well, if Brian always makes a mess. Why doesn't Derek do it? Because That's there wouldn't reason. be anything left to drink if I did it. Because my mess would be much significantly larger than Brian's mess. I think people also underestimate how difficult it is to do all of these things <laughs> while on camera without a script, more yeah. or less, too. Yeah. We really have an idea of what we're going to say, but everything that comes out of our mouth, I mean, quite literally, I like to be just as surprised as you as what comes out of my mouth. So we don't really go by a script. It's more we have an idea of what we want the video to be and stuff like this. How do you script this? We have no idea what these are going to taste like. I mean, we know it's going to taste like mead. But beyond that, we don't know anything. One thing I would like to say, a lot of people have mentioned this, that pasteurization clarifies the mead. I agree and disagree at the same time, because if you look at these four, two of these are pasteurized, two of these are non-pasteurized. They are essentially the same clarity. I don't see a true difference. That's important because we're gonna do a blind taste of these. There's two of each. Yeah. That way we can try to figure out, is there a difference in flavor? So I'm going to leave the room. Derek is going to mix them up and then I'll come back and mix them up and we'll do that thing. So I'm going to leave. Sometimes I think it'd be really funny if like I didn't mix them all at all because sometimes Brian like over mixes and you know that if you're, if you're shuffling cards, seven is the number because if you go beyond seven, then they start coming back into order again. I don't know if you knew that, but it's a thing. So I'm just going to go like that. Huh? Huh? All right, I'm done. I'm done! Okay. All right, first thing I want to say is I know that there's foam on the top of two of these. That's kind of problematic. So either we have to wait until the foam goes away or I gotta froth up the other two somehow. Not, not happy about that. So see, we have a problem. These foam. two have foam. We can see it clearly. Yeah. So how about we do this? Yeah. Grab a chopstick. Oh, all right. There's your sanitized chopstick. And I just want to try to break up some of those bubbles because that bothers me. I don't want to have a clue, you know, like easily. I know that these two are the same and those two are the same. I don't know which is which at this point. I don't think. All right. Now you have a new clean chopstick. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. The foam is not going away. It's like staying. I mean, that's some serious head. <laughs> it just won't go away. Is that part of the, like, the pasteurization? I don't know. Firm? Foam? Which is firm? this? I don't, I don't know. know. Is this the pasteurized or non-pasteurized? I don't know. It's one of them. There we go. Ha! Yeah. Watch, it'll be gone before we get to this. All right, quick, let's drink. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we gotta mix them up. You're fine now. Okay, now they look pretty equal to me. I can't really tell. So I'm gonna leave the room, she's gonna mix them up.
This isn't working. It's okay. We have a chair. So, there's something about one of them that makes the foam stay. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure which one it is, but we're gonna see if there's a difference. I gonna, am gonna... really good at ignoring things, such as this. I'm not, I can't ignore anything. So this is not going to bias me in any manner whatsoever. Are we doing the same mm -hmm. testing? Okay. That's a pretty nice meat. Mm. Good sweetness, good, good acidity level. It's a very basic meat. Hmm. We need water. Where's your water? Gotta refill it. Be right back. So essentially, here, see, here's the problem. I know that this one is different than this one, and this one is different than this one. And I know that those two are the same, those two are the same. But I don't know which is which. So that's an interesting conundrum. I feel like I know that there's a difference between them, not because of the visual. I thought I detected something the first time around. You detected that? Mm-hmm. Is this one sweeter to you? I don't know that it's sweeter. What the heck are you doing? You're gonna knock it over. I'm gonna knock it over. It's not sweeter, it's more rounded. Mm, okay. It almost gave the impression of aging. Yeah, like the vanillins. No, that's not what I mean. Well, I mean... The harsh edges are gone. Yeah, that's what I'm detecting. An easy way to describe it is this. This one and that one, the ones with the foam, have a wider range, the highs and lows. In other words, their brightness level, their acidity level, and their depth and complexity is like out to here. This one is just brought in a touch on both ends. It's not as complex and not quite as bright. It definitely feels mellowed. Like it feels, I don't, I don't wanna say muted because it's not really muted, it's mellowed. It's like the flavors are blended together a little bit better. I can't say which I like better, but I'm gonna guess that this is the unpasteurized and this is the pasteurized. I mean, right off the bat, I that's what I would think. But you really do have to have them side by side to taste the difference. They are within 2% of each other. They are so close. <clears throat> At first, I detected and described, as you saw to Brian, that that side was sweeter than this side. And after doing the chug cleanse, chug cleanse, that is not what is actually happening. What's happening to me is that this side has a stronger, bitter finish than this side. Yeah. So if you don't cleanse between the two, then this one reads a sweet, sweeter because it doesn't have that bitter end. But I feel that sweetness level up front, they're the same. Okay. I would also like to point something out. I just did a, a clarity test. There is a difference. This one is more clear than this one by a hair. When I hold them up, we have an umbrella over here. I can see the netting and webbing of the umbrella through this one. I don't see it through this one. It's, it's just, just cloudy enough that you can't see it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not a huge difference, but you have to hold it up to the light to see it. Slight difference in cloudiness. All right, so the clarity difference is really hard to tell. And if you just look at it, they look the same color. They look the same opacity. But I think the only reason why we can detect the difference is because... Hi, Inigo. Can you get down, please? Down in front. Seriously, dude. Seriously. What, when has this ever been okay? Okay, so that just happened. <laughs> Today has been just like this train wreck. It's been cold, so he's a little excited. They're and all excited. Inigo jumps on the table. He does. We don't know why, yeah. but he jumps on the table a lot. It is for Bolton. It's also, we've been filming for like four and a half hours today. So he's like, hey, it's my time. Yeah. So yeah, he's spoiled. So anyway, the clarity difference. The only reason why we can tell that it's different is because we used to be professional photographers. So we got an eye for this thing. Yeah. But as far as taste, I, it's very close. I do think that the original 
Well, I'm guessing this it's is the original. It's been a while now. Even though it's been like two seconds for you, we've done so much stuff. Yeah, the Amazon guy showed up. The package was broken. She had to go vacuum the floor. I, yeah, all kinds of stuff has happened. You guys just don't know about it. And then the cat jumped up on the table. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. See, this is really good. I like this. Got a nice honey sweetness. But I like this one better. See? Why? Because this one truncates that bitter oh. note at the end. No, this one does. I don't get the bitter note on this one. This one does. I'm not getting a bitter note on this one. I'm getting it on that one. I don't know who you are or what you're talking about. It's there, but it's very minor. I'm still gonna go with, this one goes from one to 10. This one goes from two to nine. When you take the full range of flavors. That's what I'm, that's the main difference. I don't know which is better. It's just slightly different. There's, there's more of a, a melding of flavors with this one. I want to say this one, I, I didn't want to use the word muted, but I think the flavors are slightly muted in this one, where they're a little bit stronger in this one. Just, I mean, we're not talking much difference. I am so confused now. I'll be completely honest with you. You are my people. I can be honest with you, right? Oh boy. Today has been just a complete cluster. Yeah. I'm not even gonna say what it was. And so now I'm so confused because I thought I had a decisive differentiation between these two brews. And now I'm just like, oh yeah, it's me, it's good. <laughs> this is what happens when we do a couple too many, too many tastings in the same day. I've, I've been a taster, I've been a dishwasher, I've been a house maintenance, I've been a counselor, I've been so many things today. I know you, you understand me, I know you feel me. I don't know which one I like best now. And that's the thing, I don't know which one I like better. But there's a slight difference. This one is a little more rough and raw this one is a little more mellowed. It, like I said, this one feels more aged. And I know you probably hate it when we say this one. We personally hate it. We don't when know we which say one is this which. One, but we don't know which one is which one, so all we have is this all right, one. Well, you know what? Let's solve that problem right now. We know that these two are the. Well, we don't know yet. Pasteurized. Yeah, I guess that. Pasteurized. Okay, these two are pasteurized. All right, so at least we got that far. <laughs> So I guess that that was the pasteurized one. And then, you know, I'm guessing that these two are the unpasteurized. So the they better be. <laughs> the foamy one was the unpasteurized? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. See, I was trying to not let that bite. Oh, wow. See, now I totally see the clarity difference. When I look through top to bottom, the pasteurized one is cloudy. So that kind of throws that whole theory of but we, instant clearing we off. We have seen this before. And this is something that we're trying to improve on. And we actually worked on this and another video that if I remember, future Derica, remember this, link that in the description below, thank you, where we tested pasteurizing an entire vessel rather yeah. than individual bottles. And that's so our that new way, way of doing it, really. So that way, the proteins that recombine during the pasteurization process can and settle out, out yeah. be done with, we don't have to deal with their nonsense, and then we can have a nice clear So bottle. what you're saying is that the pasteurized one would probably clear out more over time. That's what I'm thinking. That's it's possible. That's been our experience. I can't say yeah. that for certain in this well, I've seen it, scenario. I've seen it where it clears out almost instantly. I've seen that. That's why we you know, started doing the whole thing. It's just, it's really interesting and we're probably belaboring the point, but the idea is people ask, is there a difference? Is there a flavor loss? There's a difference, obviously, because we were able to pair the two, but can we actually verbalize that difference in a communicative manner? Like I say, it's kind of a, no. a, a, a breadth of complexity. It's slightly less in the pasteurized version than it is in the original. The original, has all the stuff that I don't like about it, but more stuff that I do like. Whereas this one has less stuff that I don't like and less stuff that I do like. So that's why I say it's kind of like it aged, it mellowed. It's almost like advanced aging, uh, uh, sped up aging. That's why I can describe it, but it's not exactly that. The flavor's just mellowed. Mm. 
but I'm going to stand by my 2% thing. I'll even go 3%. That's how little difference there really is. You see how much trouble we're actually having trying to put into words. I, I have to. They're so close. This is the unpasteurized, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, see, I had to check because I don't know. <laughs> but this one. The uh, unpasteurized uh, version. The unpasteurized. Thank you. We can change that now. The unpasteurized version, I get a more sharp brightness up front. Yes. With the sweetness, and then it goes more into the extreme bitterness, but not yep. displeasurable the bitterness, bitterness yep. but the typical mead bitterness in the mm -hmm. end. Where this doesn't have the brightness in the front, but it still has the nice sweetness. I think mm -hmm. sweetness level is equivalent in the mm -hmm. front, but it doesn't have that bitterness so much. That's pronounced exactly what I've been saying. In the end. So, all the good stuff is, is lessened and all the bad stuff is lessened. So it it like narrows it just a little bit. The top and bottom go in a little closer. But it makes me difficult. It, it makes me difficult. You, see, you are difficult. I sometimes. am difficult. I Actually, am difficult. She is, she is not difficult. She's so difficult. It, it makes it difficult for me to say decisively which one I prefer. Yeah, I can't decide which one I prefer Because either. I enjoy the bright note that I'm getting in the front of this one, but I enjoy the lessened bitter note that I'm getting in this one. Right. So it actually makes a different product is what we're saying. So yes, it makes a but, difference. Is that difference bad or good? I don't know. Well, my question is, isn't it essentially the same effect that aging has? It does seem to replicate the aging. It really does. A few yeah. months of aging. So when people ask us now, does pasteurization change the flavor of it? Yes, it makes it taste like it's aged anywhere from three to six months. That it is rounds it off. Very interesting to me. That is, every time we do one of these, we learn something that we did not know before. We get information that we were totally not expecting. I thought they're either gonna taste exactly the same or the pasteurized version is gonna taste flat and boring. It's not flat and boring. It's slightly less complex, but only the highs and lows. Yeah. Basically all the good stuff is slightly reduced, but all the bad stuff is reduced too, bringing it back to like, they're both really, really good. Yeah. Making pasteurization totally valid. Yeah. I don't have any issue with pasteurization. And that's kind of what people were asking. Like, is it okay to pasteurize? Are you gonna lose anything? I don't think you're giving anything valid up by pasteurizing. The only thing that I could say in this test that may make me want to adjust a brew that I knew I was going to need to pasteurize is that perhaps in secondary, for reasons that are known, I would want to bump up the acidity level if I knew I was going to pasteurize it. That that actually is a valid point. And I, that way I, that. I would be able to keep some of that brightness because I know it's gonna to be toned down during the pasteurization process. But does it not tone down a little bit during the aging process too? It does. So, so it kind of makes it where this is just an accelerated aging. It, it does seem that way. It's, it, which is not what I expected at all. I, I think that's actually really fascinating and curious to see what other people's experiences are. Have you ever tried a side-by-side -side pasteurized versus non? Sure. By the way, you probably saw, I poured them both into the same glass and let's find out how that is. The monster beverage. The Frank I just had bright, yet not quite so bright, and <laughs> bitter, yet not quite so bitter at the same time. Actually, it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. Mixed together, they're great. So pasteurize half and don't pasteurize the other half. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you don't pasteurize, you can make bottle bombs. So that's the whole thing is pasteurization is a safety issue. Right. We do it to prevent bottle bombs from, you know, from extra fermentation. So are you hurting your brew by, by pasteurizing versus there's many other ways to do it. We don't like to use the chemicals. We don't like to use the preservatives. I don't think we're really hurting it by pasteurizing. I don't I don't think there's any, now, any downside. Every time we do a test, we learn something new, as Brian has already reiterated. But I think the more we test, the more I strive to test more. Oh yeah. I already have more questions than now I want answered about various things that we've done. But I got, think I think that's the part of knowing things is the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Yes. 
I used to say that as a photographer. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And I think that's a key to homebrewing. You can learn everything that you need to know about homebrewing in a day, okay? You can spend the rest of your life mastering the craft. And that is a very important thing. You can keep it as simple as you want or as complex as you want. We tend to keep things on the simpler side around here on purpose. That is a choice. That is a conscious choice. We don't want to make it incredibly complex. We want to have everybody make their own wine, make their own mead, make their own ciders at home. There's no reason not to. People did it 50 years ago, 100 years ago. There's no reason not to. And with today's technology, the stuff that we have available, the products that you can get just in your grocery store, there's no reason not to do this at home. Don't be afraid, give it a try. But even on the simple side, there's always room for improvement and learning more. And Absolutely. that's what we're striving to do with these tests. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And if there's something else you want to, us to test, let us know in the comments below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.